If you follow this channel, you know that I'm making my own dream game engine in C++ and OpenGL from scratch, based on feedback that you guys have been making and I'm very happy to be here to show you what's going on and what is the next steps, because uh, right now the engine is currently in closed alpha, so it's available only in my Discord server, and by the way, the link in the, is in the description if you wanna join and try it out. I'm moving towards version 1.0, which will be the first official release that is ready to rock and roll you can use in production and do whatever you want so i'm here with the engine and i'd like to show you a couple of cool things in this video and especially what you guys have been making using the game engine because i'm receiving a bunch of feedbacks if you follow along with this uh, project you know that 99 percent of the stuff you see here is based on feedback is based on what people think about the game engine and the usage so so I'm receiving a bunch of cool new ideas and one of them, them are from Half, a member of my Discord and he is suggesting a bunch of new ways to make this engine a little bit more uh, user friendly and so on. You, If you guys follow me, you know I'm planning to add Visual Scripting, I'm gonna talk about that uh, in a second, but first of all, um, right now the only way to script, to add code to, the, to your project, to your game, is by using a Python script. So I can right click here in the asset browser and create a new asset, uh, a Python script, and if I double click it, oops, I need to edit, it's right here, uh, you can see that I can edit my script, okay? Uh, so this is Python, and Half was saying, hey, this could be way easier, could be way more interesting for the user uh, to figure out how to program, because you still need to uh, select here uh, your Python script, let me max maximize this window. So you still need to know uh, Python in order to type the script, it doesn't have like autocomplete and anything like that. And he was proposing something very interesting, take a look at that. So, and by the way, he wrote that from scratch using uh, his own skills and he basically made a tool, an external tool to uh, the game engine to write code. And by the way, I'm, I'm planning to add like better tooling support so you're gonna be able to do this kind of stuff directly inside the engine. Right now, you need to use like an external tool to do it. Uh, it's possible already to run a code, so like, you can open the editor tools and run the script and you're gonna work, but there's no such a thing as uh, UI editing and stuff like that. So let's take a look on his tool. So it's uh, basically, uh, it, it, it feels like a regular text editor, except that you can right click and insert new and you have a bunch of options. You can, uh, you can add a script line, a function, a comment or an anchor and take a look at that. Uh, so he clicked in script line and there's a bunch of options here. Uh, let me go back a little bit so we can see like import, control, debug, values, game, entity and if you click on it, you have like a, basically a visual way of adding scripts and by the way, this is using the engine API itself. So he's grabbing, see, he's assigning X as the mouse position X, and then he's doing the same thing with the Y position of the mouse. So again, he is not writing, he's not typing any line of code. And I know if you know programming, if you're an expert, uh, you may prefer to write your stuff, but if you don't know nothing, that's very handy because you, you don't need to memorize stuff. You don't need to remember how to use the APIs. The APIs is right here. So let's keep watching the video. So he's doing like keyboard and mouse inputs. So you can press a key and he automatically adds an if. You can reorder the script. You can uh, indent the, the Python script because Python is indented. I'm really enjoying the icons here uh, on the lines. So you are, uh, you can do like another uh, option. This is basically a set mouse position, super good. So you need to pass two integers. That is basically this probably uh, that he's uh, setting here. So again, this is a visual way of adding script and I'm very excited because of that because this is made by the community, a community that you already have growing up uh, based around the engine and Half is coming uh, along with amazing ideas, many other users are uh, coming with great ideas and uh, by the way, I forgot to show you, but 
he made another video, this time with the engine open. So we can see here that Unity engine is open in the background and his tool is open in here. So what he did is basically create a new Python script, as you can see here, he's creating a new Python script. And then he goes to, to the tool and writes some code here uh, in a visual way again. So he's kidding the engine when you in the update method of the class. I'm not sure why the, the, the class and the methods are centered, but that's okay. So when he press escape, he basically kits the engine. So he copied the code. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw that. And he, he's basically going to the Unity engine and pasting the code and it's going to be more or less like ready to go. So that's an amazing idea. This is an external tool that he wrote specifically to make easy uh, to write Unity engine code. And by the way, if you complain about the name, I'm going to rename the name. I, I'm going to rename the engine. I already have the new name, but I'm going to do an announcement hopefully this week. So stay tuned for that and subscribe to this channel if you're not subscribed. But I'm very impressed by that because this is very simple. This is not like reinventing the wheel. This is just right click. If you don't want to, if you don't want to use it, you don't need to. But it adds a lot, uh, especially for beginners. So what I'm thinking is to go ahead and add this kind of functionality inside the engine itself. So we can right-click here in the update. Uh, right now there is nothing happening, but we do have right-click uh, options here uh, in the. For example, let me select. Uh, an entity, if I right click here in the properties, I have a menu with a bunch of sub menus. So if I add like right click options here and add this kind of functionality, imagine how cool it will be, especially for beginners to be able to write code without knowing exactly how to write code. That's very in interesting. That's very exciting. And that's what I want for this engine. I want it to be uh, beginner friendly. And that's why I'm planning to add Visual Scripting as well. So thank you a lot, Half. I really appreciate. Uh, I wanted to like do this uh, improvements in the engine for this video specifically, but I'm basically running out of time for some tasks here. So I need to focus in a bunch of other stuff, but this is of course a high priority. I already asked Half uh, to the full list of stuff that he wants to uh, include in this right click menu and I'm gonna add it for sure because this is super cool and if you have any suggestions that you want to be uh, able to contribute and to see coming to life in, the, in this game engine please share it in the discord server because I'm very excited to have this community uh, built around the engine okay so let's do some update time and I also need to figure out to tell you what is going on with this game engine because as I said in the beginning of this video uh, the current version is 0.9.5 and it's a closed alpha release. In other words, only the ones inside my discord search server which is free by the way uh, need uh, are able to download it because I really need to test things up and figure out if everything is going on. But I don't want to like uh, extend the release date too much because the engine is basically ready to rock and roll and I need to fix some stuff and improve a little bit of usability and then you're going to be ready for 1.0 release. So what is in my mind right now is that I'm gonna uh, freeze every new update until 1.0. Why I'm gonna do that? Because then I'm gonna have time to fix every kind of bugs, every kind of issues that we have. Uh, I'm talking about usability issues, I'm talking about bugs and APIs that is missing because Python API is great. You can do around, uh, you can already do a bunch of stuff, but not everything. You can, uh, you, you still miss some stuff that I need to add to the Python API and I'm I'm thinking to take this time to basically make the engine feature complete uh, so you got you all you, you're gonna be able to use it when I release it so uh, this is the idea and something that I'm a little bit worried about not a lot actually but uh, the engine is a deferred shading game engine so it takes a lot of uh, GPU resources to handle this stuff uh, this is a, this is a simple scene and I, I'm with this scene open it for a reason and it's related to this line right here I'm gonna show you in a second but um, 
you can handle like advanced graphics on it and it's different and it takes a little bit of GPU usage as I said. So the problem is that this game engine is not running uh, on lower end GPUs, especially Intel graphics. Like 99% of the people who uh, send me a message and say, hey, your engine is not running they are basically use, using Intel graphics, okay? <laughs> so uh, it's because the engine is a little bit like uh, not that lightweight in terms of Intel graphics. And I'm kind of thinking, I'm facing a dilemma right now because to fix that, I need to simplify the handred. I need to provide like a forward handred or less um, or deferred shading with less textures, with less frame buffers and so on. But to do that, I really need to refactor a bunch of stuff. So I'm facing this dilemma because it's gonna take a while, of course, uh, in order to fix everything that I need and make sure everything is ready to go. And um, yeah, I'm kind of thinking what you're gonna do uh, for this release. That's one of the reasons why I need to, uh, I want to freeze the new features uh, for a while until the official release to fix everything and make sure the, the engine runs everywhere with no problems at all and you'll be able to make your games because this engine is really, really, really user oriented. I really wanted to make it uh, to make an easy engine that everyone is going to be able to use it. Okay, so this is for you guys that are waiting for the official release. Okay, uh, it's coming because releasing this engine is literally a life goal to me uh, to do this year and probably in the next couple of months, maybe next month, because right now the only thing that I uh, it, that it's missing uh, to release the engine is uh, me create a game using it to make sure it works just fine and it runs on everyone's computer. And I also have that confirmation, I'm ready to release it, okay? So stay tuned for that as well. And now let's do a little bit of, of a new features log, uh, devlog here because I did some new stuff. I was planning and trying to add to rain editing so that's why you have like this height map. Uh, it worked, but I had some problems uh, related to to the normals of the terrain, and I don't know how to fix that exactly at the moment. So I decided to just um, disable the code. So there's. Uh, let me see if I can actually add. So here we go. I can, for now, let me disable my face cam real quick. I can right click here and add. Uh, a 3D graphics terrain component. Uh, it doesn't work, by the way. There's nothing here because I disable everything. But and I'm gonna disable this for the release by as well. But I was working in the terrain stuff, but it's still work in progress. Not gonna release it just yet. But something that I will release is physics constrained, and that's the whole point of this gizmos here. I don't know if I sh uh, I've showed it you, but. Now I have gizmos in the viewport, so this light here do have a gizmo, and if I change the light color, let me put it hat, red, uh, the gizmo becomes red. And this is an, is an indicator that is this object is attached to this one in this position, because this cube here is a rigid body, so it falls, uh, it's a dynamic one, no, it's not dynamic, uh, but it can be dynamic if I want to make it fall. But the question is, this is a rigid body and this one here is a rigid body as well. And this one is a dynamic. So in theory, it, it should fall with the gravity. But since I added this physics constraint component, it is going to attach, um, you're going to like connect those two rich bodies together uh, in this point. By the way, I can change the target and the origin point. So if I change the target, this point is gonna be offset. And same with the origin here, I can do whatever I want. But the question is, if I, if I start the game, this Reach this physics constraint, you're gonna try to like connect those two points and make the physics act uh, like that. So if I start the game, you can see here that this object is kind of connected to the other. And if I move this other object, now the physics gets crazy because this is a slider. Let me move it in a, a little bit of a better way. Here we go. So it's a slider, meaning that I can do this Oh, it's sleeping. I'm sorry. I need to enable the always active. I'm sorry. Forgot about that. 
but you can see that they have a relation and by the way this is basically for like vehicle suspension or stuff like that that's why it's sliding up but i can change the type so this is a slider but i can change the type for for example to a sphere this is for like ragdolls so it's behaving like a sphere around the center around that center just like that and it's behaving like a sphere i can change it to the other as well uh, if I remember correctly, it's the hinge. Here you go. And the hinge is basically like uh, your elbow. This is hinge, okay? So this, uh, your hand is this uh, object here, and uh, your your shoulder is this object right here, and the your elbow is that connection. So they basically do that, okay? Uh, so this is basically the usage. I can do like uh, some customization and stuff like that. Uh, in this slider, I can do, I can change the lower limit and the upper limit. So let me change it real quick. So you can see like the lower limit, let me make it minus 10 and the upper limit, let me make it 10. And here you go. It, it, it falls, it goes up. So this is a basically basically a physics stuff and that I added and it's super cool, super handy to have this uh, to make your games. It's gonna allow you to make different kinds of types of games and physics game, you can use this to make a bridge or an arm or a ragdoll as I said, or anything you want, okay? So I'm very excited about this one. And this, uh, this month, I basically did a bunch of fixes in the engine. So let me close it real quick here and open another project that I was doing for fun. So this is another project. This is like kind of a snow project. The frame uh, is a little bit um, slow here because I'm recording my screen, but this is running at 60 frames per second, like we've, we've all recording the screen. But I have here the usage of particles. So this, there's no falling is particle and the, the trees here are particles as well. So I have a bunch of particles and that's super cool. And I do have like the, the ground that is a decal. So the, the ground is covering the, like the snow on top of the, of the ground is a decal in the game engine. So bunch of advanced features here. I have a house. I fixed some problems uh, with like shadows on the interior. And by the way, this is a particle inside the house. I, I need to move the house. But anyways, so I'm kind of working in a couple of different stuff here and I'm excited to see what you guys are going to be able to come up with uh, using the game engine. So that's basically it for this devlog. This is basically um, an explanation why I haven't posted about much about the game engine. I've been a little bit busy doing some other stuff, but now I'm going back to normal slowly but surely and I'm planning to fix all the issues that I have in the game engine to release it as soon as possible. And that may re, uh, that may mean in me rewriting the hundred. We're gonna be well. This is something that I don't want to do, kinda, because it's gonna take a while. But maybe it's gonna be necessary and it's gonna be better in a like long period of time. Well, you're gonna see, okay? You see. Oh, and I do have two things to tell you about in this video. The first one is that I launched a patron, so make sure you check it out. And the second one is that I also released my first uh, Udemy course. It's super cheap, and you're gonna learn how to get started with game development without using a game engine. You, we're gonna use Python and Pygame, and you're gonna understand the basics on how to use Pygame to make games. So make sure you check it out. The link is gonna be we're gonna be in the description and remember you also support this channel when you purchase a course or something like that okay so make sure to subscribe and i see you in the next video